It's time for the next episode of The Pests That Want to Nest and Rest. It's the holiday season. It's getting cold. People might be in a giving mood. Don't fall for it. Do not let that giving mood make you turn off your brain. Don't do it. If you see um, people as you're walking, just keep your eyes down. Just keep your eyes down. Get off of dating apps for um, the next four to six months. Just get off of them. There's going to be a lot of people that are looking to rest in your home. Just get off of them. Let's look at this. Let's look at this article. The title, Dear Annie, I invited a homeless friend to stay with me. Now he won't leave. I'm sure you could just imagine how silly they feel now that they can't get this person out. This person says, Dear Annie, I've gotten myself into a bit of a pickle. A few months ago, I ran into an old work acquaintance at the store. We hadn't seen each other in several years. He asked to exchange numbers, and I did, thinking nothing of it. A day or two later, I received a text asking how things were, how things were going. Small talk. Long story short, I found out he was homeless and living in the streets. I told him I had a spare room and that he was welcome to stay. He said he couldn't afford, he couldn't afford to pay rent. I said it was okay and that I can give him a roof over his head and that I didn't need rent. Fast forward a couple of months and I realized I'm paying for everything. Not just room and board, but also laundry supplies, food, beverages, etc. He's made a great living made, but that's not what I signed up for. I told him I was not willing to support him. All I agreed to was to give him a room to help. Fast forward a couple more months, he ended up being able to provide his own food and beverages, but he still used my laundry supplies. He has replaced the toilet paper once since he's been here. The point is, I don't want a roommate any longer. He barely does chores and he sleeps all the time when he's not working his part-time job. I asked what his plans were for the winter because he has a seasonal job. He's, he claims that he's put in several applications. I thought helping him out would give him a hand up, not a hand out. I want him out, but I feel bad that if I kick him out, he's going to be back on the streets for the winter, even though I understand his lack of motivation is not my problem. I'm tired of coming home mad almost every day because he's a bum and barely does enough to scrape by. It may be good enough for him, but it's not enough for me. Signed, Regrets Being Nice. Okay, Dear Annie says, Dear Regrets Being Nice, you did a good thing, but you probably should have seen this coming. Next time your emotions move you to take drastic measures, ask yourself whether you are truly willing to accept the ramifications. In a perfect world, you would have discussed your house rules in a timeline for how long he would be living there before he moved in. You have slightly less leverage now that he's already living in your home because you can't just kick people out because there are laws against that. But it's still important that you have a conversation. Now that you've involved him, yourself in his affairs, you can't very well kick him onto the street. Agree on a move out date that will give him enough time to find affordable housing and a new job. If that doesn't motivate him, then you can always give him the contact information for the homeless assistance in your state. Also, just get off of apps, get off dating apps, keep your head down when you're walking through the city streets. This is it's the this homosexual season out there. Um, people are looking to move in just to mooch. So be aware. Keep your head on a swivel. Many people still have cell phones. They still work out. They need a gym because they need to be able to showers and all that good stuff so they will present to as people that still have their life together stop giving people a chance at this particular point it's a survival of the fittest that's it's just survival of the some of these people are looking to just date simply to have a place to land some people have a sob story like this person had some people use dating apps so just just be aware of what is going on and be aware of these landlord laws and tenant laws in your state and how long people can stay in your place, even though you shouldn't be letting people in your place, um, before you have to legally go through the eviction process. The people that are looking to land in your home, they know the tenant laws of your state. So you need to be aware of the laws in your state. Anyways, um, this is an ongoing situation. We will need to continue to talk about this because it does not seem to be letting up anytime soon. 
we have got to have stronger, stronger, stronger boundaries. That's all we can do. Strong boundaries. Don't look at people. Get off the dating apps. They use the dating apps to hunt for a place to land. Y'all, leave any um, tips, tricks, or whatever you might have. Let's make sure everybody is aware. Y'all have a good one. Here are some things to remember when you're on dating apps in New York City, especially with fall and winter coming. That is where hobosexuals and squatters are at their peak. The first is if you're on a dating app and a person's bio or their name says, I need an apartment or looking for a room with, you know, the eye emojis or looking for apartment, red flag. Why are you apartment hunting on a dating app? No. The second is that they keep an eyes on you and your apartment. If you have multiple rooms or you have roommates, they're going to wait until you change roommates or you give that room to somebody else because they want it to be them. And when you don't give it to them, they get very angry and aggressive. They will cut you off. Hobosexuals, they're just watching you in your apartment. They're always coming up with a sob story about why they can't go back home. It's often very exaggerated. They're manipulating you to make you believe them. They just don't want to go back home. They want to stay with you for days or even weeks at a time. No, get your ass back home. The fourth is like when you do invite them over, they start looking around like, oh, I can get used to this place. No, you better fucking not because you will not come in here again. They're always asking questions about your rent, about your apartment. This is like red flags. Like why are you asking people evasive questions about their home? They want to know how much room and how much space you have. They want to know how much your rent is because if the rent is cheap, you know, 50-50, they're going to split it with you and they want to be in that relationship with you real quick. Two things to remember, in New York City, do not tell anybody that you live alone and don't post pictures of yourself inside your apartment and don't post those pictures on dating apps because they like to look at the background like, oh, that's a nice place. That's a nice bathroom. That's a nice kitchen. Show me more. Do I look cute in this picture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show me more of your apartment. No. Remember to stay safe and be cautious of these animals. You think you've had a hard time dating? I once went on a date with a guy, ABC Cosina, and he showed up with an overnight bag. And I just knew it was an overnight bag. I knew it wasn't a gym bag. At the end of the date, he's like, oh, I'll call us a car. I said, okay, cool. He hands me his phone. He said, put in your address. I said, well, why don't you put in your address and then I'll put in mine? And he was like, no, we're going back to yours. And I said, no, we're not. It's not a homeless shelter. I'm not taking in strays. We're not doing that. It's not happening. You're going home and I'm going home. So if you want to call me a car home, that's great. And once I told him that, he said he wasn't going to call me a car. And I said, that's fine. I'll call my own car. Peace out, Girl Scout. To the man that brought his overnight bag to my date. Are you dumb or stupid?